Antiphospholipid Syndrome, Wikipedia Article Audio Antiphospholipid syndrome or antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, is an autoimmune, hypercoagulable state caused by antiphospholipid antibodies. APS provokes blood clots in both arteries and veins as well as pregnancy-related complications such as miscarriage, stillbirth, preterm delivery, and severe preeclampsia. The diagnostic criteria require one clinical event and two antibody blood tests spaced at least three months apart that confirm the presence of either lupus anticoagulant or anti-beta-2 glycoprotein I. Antiphospholipid syndrome can be primary or secondary. Primary antiphospholipid syndrome occurs in the absence of any other related disease. Secondary antiphospholipid syndrome occurs with other autoimmune diseases, such as systemic lupus erythematosus. In rare cases, APS leads to rapid organ failure due to generalized thrombosis. This is termed catastrophic antiphospholipid syndrome and is associated with a high risk of death. Signs and Symptoms Risk Factors Antiphospholipid syndrome often requires treatment with anticoagulant medication such as heparin to reduce the risk of further episodes of thrombosis and improve the prognosis of pregnancy. Warfarin slash Coumadin is not used during pregnancy because it can cross the placenta, unlike heparin, and is teratogenic. The presence of antiphospholipid antibodies in the absence of blood clots or pregnancy-related complications does not indicate APS. Antiphospholipid syndrome can cause arterial or venous blood clots, in any organ system, or pregnancy-related complications. In APS patients, the most common venous event is deep vein thrombosis of the lower extremities, and the most common arterial event is stroke. In pregnant women affected by APS, there is an increased risk of recurrent miscarriage, intrauterine growth restriction, and preterm birth. A frequent cause of such complications is placental infarctions. In some cases, APS seems to be the leading cause of mental and slash or development retardation in the newborn due to an APL-induced inhibition of trophoblast differentiation. The antiphospholipid syndrome responsible for most of the miscarriages in later trimesters seen in concomitant systemic lupus erythematosus and pregnancy. Other common findings, although not part of the APS classification criteria, are low platelet count, heart valve disease, and levito reticularis. There are also associations between antiphospholipid antibodies and headaches, migraines, and oscillopsia. Some studies have shown the presence of antiphospholipid antibodies in the blood and spinal fluid of patients with psychological symptoms. Very few patients with primary APS go on to develop SLE. Pathogenesis Risk factors for developing antiphospholipid syndrome include There is an additional elevated risk of adrenal gland bleeds leading to waterhouse frit erickson syndrome. This will require adrenal steroid replacement treatment for life. Diagnosis Antiphospholipid syndrome is an autoimmune disease in which antiphospholipid antibodies react against proteins that bind to anionic phospholipids on plasma membranes. Like many autoimmune diseases, it is more common in women than in men. The exact cause is not known, but activation of the system of coagulation is evident. Clinically important antiphospholipid antibodies are associated with thrombosis and vascular disease. The syndrome can be divided into primary and secondary forms. Anti-APO and a subset of anti-cardiolipin antibodies bind to APOH, 
which in turn inhibits protein C, a glycoprotein with regulatory function upon the common pathway of coagulation. Lupus anticoagulant antibodies bind to prothrombin, thus increasing its cleavage to thrombin, its active form. Lupus anticoagulant In APS there are also antibodies binding to protein S, which is a CO factor of protein C. Thus, anti-protein S antibodies decrease protein C efficiency. Anticardiolipin antibodies Annexin A5 forms a shield around negatively charged phospholipid molecules, thus reducing their availability for coagulation. Thus, anti-annexin A5 antibodies increase phospholipid-dependent coagulation steps. Criteria the lupus anticoagulant antibodies are those that show the closest association with thrombosis, those that target beta-2 glycoprotein 1 have a greater association with thrombosis than those that target prothrombin. Anticardiolipin antibodies are associated with thrombosis at moderate to high titers. Patients with both lupus anticoagulant antibodies and moderate-slash-high titer anticardiolipin antibodies show a greater risk of thrombosis than with one alone. The increased risks of recurrent miscarriage, intrauterine growth restriction and preterm birth by antiphospholipid antibodies, as supported by in vitro studies, include decreased trophoblast viability, syncytialization and invasion, deranged production of hormones and signaling molecules by trophoblasts, as well as activation of coagulation and complement pathways. Treatment Antiphospholipid syndrome is tested for in the laboratory using both liquid phase coagulation assays and solid phase ELISA assays. Genetic thrombophilia is part of the differential diagnosis of APS and can coexist in some APS patients. Presence of genetic thrombophilia may determine the need for anticoagulation therapy. Thus genetic thrombophilia screening can consist of The testing of antibodies to the possible individual targets of APL such as beta-2 glycoprotein 1 and antiphosphatidyl serine is currently under debate as testing for anticardiolipin appears to be currently sensitive and specific for diagnosis of APS even though cardiolipin is not considered an in vivo target for antiphospholipid antibodies. This is tested for by using a minimum of two coagulation tests that are phospholipid sensitive, due to the heterogeneous nature of the lupus anticoagulant antibodies. The patient on initial screening will typically have been found to have a prolonged APTT that does not correct in an 80 colon 20 mixture with normal human plasma. The APTT, dilute Russell's viper venom time, kaolin clotting time, Dilute thromboplastin time, silica clotting time and prothrombin time are the principal tests used for the detection of lupus anticoagulant. These tests must be carried out on a minimum of two occasions at least six weeks apart and be positive on each occasion, demonstrating persistent positivity, to allow a diagnosis of antiphospholipid syndrome. This is to prevent patients with transient positive tests being diagnosed as positive. Distinguishing a lupus antibody from a specific coagulation factor inhibitor is normally achieved by differentiating the effects of a lupus anticoagulant on factor assays from the effects of a specific coagulation factor antibody. The lupus anticoagulant will inhibit all the contact activation pathway factors. Lupus anticoagulant will also rarely cause a factor assay to give a result lower than 35 IU slash DL whereas a specific factor antibody will rarely give a result higher than 10 IU slash DL.
Monitoring for anticoagulant therapy by the APTT ratio is compromised due to the effects of the lupus anticoagulant and in these situations is generally best performed using a chromogenic assay based on the inhibition of factor XA by antithrombin in the presence of heparin. Prognosis Anticardiolipin antibodies can be detected using an enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay immunological test which screens for the presence of beta-2 glycoprotein-1 dependent anticardiolipin antibodies. History A low platelet count and positivity for antibodies against beta-2 glycoprotein-1 or phosphatidylserine may also be observed in a positive diagnosis. Primary APS, genetic marker HLADR7 Classification with APS requires evidence of both one or more specific, documented clinical events and the confirmed presence of a repeated APL. The Saparo APS classification criteria were replaced by the Sydney criteria in 2006. Based on the most recent criteria, classification with APS requires one clinical and one laboratory manifestation. There are three distinct APS disease entities, primary, secondary, and catastrophic. Further studies for factor V Leiden variant and the prothrombin G20210A mutation, factor 8 levels, MTHFR mutation, levels of protein C, free and total protein S, factor 8, antithrombin, plasminogen, tissue plasminogen activator and plasminogen activator inhibitor 1. According to a 2006 consensus statement, it is advisable to classify APS into one of the following categories for research purposes. Research Bibliography the international consensus statement is commonly used for catastrophic APS diagnosis. Based on this statement, definite CAPS diagnosis requires Clinical, a documented episode of arterial, venous, or small vessel thrombosis other than superficial venous thrombosis in any tissue or organ by objective validated criteria with no significant evidence of inflammation in the vessel wall, one or more unexplained deaths of a morphologically normal fetus at or beyond the tenth week of gestation and slash or three or more unexplained consecutive spontaneous abortions before the tenth week of gestation, with maternal anatomic or hormonal abnormalities and paternal and maternal chromosomal causes excluded or at least one premature birth of a morphologically normal neonate before the 34th week of gestation due to eclampsia or severe preeclampsia according to standard definitions, or recognized features of placental insufficiency. VDRL, which detects antibodies against syphilis, may have a false positive result in APL positive patients, although the more specific test for syphilis, FTA-ABS, that use recombinant antigens will not have a false positive result. Often, this disease is treated by giving aspirin to inhibit platelet activation, and slash or warfarin as an anticoagulant. The goal of the prophylactic treatment with warfarin is to maintain the patient's INR between 2.0 and 3.0. It is not usually done in patients who have had no thrombotic symptoms. Anticoagulation appears to prevent miscarriage in pregnant women. In pregnancy, low molecular weight heparin and low dose aspirin are used instead of warfarin because of warfarin's teratogenicity. Women with recurrent miscarriage are often advised to take aspirin and to start low molecular weight heparin treatment after missing a menstrual cycle. In refractory cases plasmapheresis may be used. I. More than one laboratory criterion present in any combination, IIA, lupus anticoagulant present alone, IIB.
anti-cardiolipin IgG and slash or IgM present alone in medium or high titers, IIC, anti-beta-2 glycoprotein IgG and slash or IgM present alone in a titer greater than 99th percentile. The long-term prognosis for APS is determined mainly by recurrent thrombosis, which may occur in up to 29% of patients, sometimes despite antithrombotic therapy. Antiphospholipid syndrome was described in full in the 1980s, by Nigel Harris and Aziz Garavi. They published the first papers in 1983. The syndrome was referred to as Hughes syndrome among colleagues after the rheumatologist Graham R.V. Hughes, who brought together the team. APS Action, is the first ever international research network that has been created to design and conduct large-scale, multi-center clinical trials in persistently antiphospholipid antibody-positive patients. The network consists of a multidisciplinary group of physicians and investigators from around the world who are interested in antiphospholipid syndrome research. The primary mission of APS Action is to prevent, treat, and cure antiphospholipid antibody-associated clinical manifestations through high-quality, multi-center, and multidisciplinary clinical research. A vascular thrombosis in three or more organs or tissues and B development of manifestations simultaneously or in less than a week and C evidence of small vessel thrombosis in at least one organ or tissue and D laboratory confirmation of the presence of APL.